Hello, my name is Ankita Chakravarti, and I'm presenting from Fremont, California. My mentor is Roland Hart. So my project, How Do ADHD and Executive Functioning Impact Students' Learning and Academic Performance in a School Setting, um, is focused on the relationship between attention deficit slash hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD, and executive functioning and how these factors can lead to a decline in students' academic performance. I chose this topic because I have an interest in psychology and I'm curious about how certain things can impact the way we function. So first, let's establish some definitions. ADHD, according to the DSM-5, is attributed to the lack of attention in tasks, a difficulty being still or restlessness, and a failure to give close attention to details. Executive functioning is divided into three core abilities. The first is working memory, or the ability to temporarily hold information. The next is cognitive flexibility, or the ability to switch between different topics or think about multiple topics at the same time. And the final one is inhibition, or the ability to control your thoughts, behaviors, actions, and emotions to do what is more appropriate in the situation. Under the Miyake Friedman model, these are all correlated with each other while still remaining separate abilities. Next, let's look at the results of this project. We found that symptoms of ADHD, like inattention and restlessness, as well as deficits in executive functions, especially in working memory and inhibition, can cause students to, fo to lose focus easily and act out in the classroom. Those with ADHD also tend to have executive functioning deficits and are thus further impaired in learning environments. Those with ADHD can have other disorders like anxiety and depression. These are known as comorbid disorders. A decline in academics due to symptoms of ADHD and executive functioning deficits could lead to stress which could exacerbate the symptoms of certain comorbid disorders, such as depression and anxiety, which would lead to a further decline in grades. This creates a feedback loop of lower grades, leading to lower mental health, leading to lower grades. So how can we fix this? How do we improve the learning environment for students? Well, teachers can start by using more interactive lessons. They can use models, planners, and a structured task order. Before finally, it is imperative that we get support from teachers and other students to support their peers in the classroom. Further research could explore how therapy, medications, and mindfulness practices may aid students in learning. Thank you for listening.